Welcome back to the channel, everybody. In this video, we are going to gang cut our common raptors. Let me point out that there is nothing new about gang cutting. We have been doing it now for almost 20 years, off and on. To be quite honest, I don't really like doing it. The stakes are kind of big. <laughs> These are 24 foot, two by 12 Doug Fur Raptors, $122 a piece. Yeah, so you don't want to cut them wrong. Uh, I have done that before. Anyway, the attachment on the chainsaw is called the Bigfoot Head Cutter XL. Will Holiday is the one that came up with this design. Uh, I'll put a link to his book description below. That's how we learned how to do it. And also there's an article on JLC. I think the author's name was John Harmon. I want to say he was from like the Philadelphia area. Anyway, that's probably 15 years old now. Gang cutting can save a tremendous amount of time and wear and tear on the body. We had 50 five zero rafters, each weighed 120 pounds a piece or thereabouts. We handled them one time onto the racks, cut them all, and then handled them one time back onto the forks. So it saves a tremendous amount of labor on the body. And we'll get into how to do it. Right here, I'm cutting off all of the blocks I ordered material long enough that we could say, hey, since they're racked, why don't we just quickly cut our blocks? These will become bird blocks. Okay, so I've got my 512 and I've adjusted. Usually, you gotta make sure that the table's parallel. You don't want any of this kind of stuff. So make sure the table is parallel. I'll slide it right up to the line. Here's my lever. I guess we could just do it again. So here, I'll just start fresh. I use my arm to support that side. And I'm gonna put the tooth at the top. And I'm basically using that to reference or register, right? I'm still parallel. So I want the tooth is cutting. I can go in just a hair, a little bit of finesse. So the tooth is good. That tooth is close. I think that looks pretty good. And this guy just helps me to kind of hold it without the saw wanting to flop over on me. Nice and tight. Now, without moving it, I'm gonna check it. I don't know if I like that. Yeah, I'm gonna loosen that up a hair. Go a little fast. Okay, I like that. Don't crank it crazy tight. Now, while I'm still there and I like where the teeth are, and I wanna be on that side of the line, ask me how many times I've messed that one up. <laughs> Make sure I have enough to stick long. I think that was right. So if you go, Kyle, nine inches. That's why they call me the master eyeballer. But. Okay, so I'm gonna go through and check. It just feels. Ooh, perfect lighting. Dang! Actually, that was crazy lighting. <laughs> it's all about the lighting. Honestly. Like the darker, the better. I look really good when it's like pitch black. <laughs> when the lights are off, I look so good. So what's this? <laughs> yeah. I've always just wanted to try that technique of the... <laughs> That's fun. <laughs> Ready? Couple of things to note. The guide is gonna help me stay nice and straight. They're all crowned down, so I'm cutting on the underside of the rafter. Because they're on that old eye joist, I mean, you can see it's kind of at the end of its life. <laughs> it still works good to stack material. Works well to stack material. Gotta get our grammar correct. Now I lost my train of thought. Okay, so the underside of the rafters might not be perfect because of course the two by 12 are milled and they aren't necessarily perfect, but the roof plane itself will be really good. 
and most of this is attic, some of it's drywall, but hey, the tapers can fix that. Go follow Drywall Shorty. She can fix all of our framer mistakes. Keep the base plate flat and keep it up against the guide. That handle is nice because it's, it gives me something just to keep it all nice and steady. I'm standing off to the side because I am cutting with the top of the bar, meaning that if it was to kick back, it would kick back behind the saw or behind me. So I'm standing out of the way. Now it's not going to kick back because kickback happens when either the nose of the bar hits something or something might bind. A non-issue here because those little scraps are just falling right off. A sharp chisel tooth chain is a requirement. That's the steel MS391, I think. It's just one of our bigger saws. So I, I'm cutting two by 12, right? Might as well use the bigger saw. That little knot came flying and hit me in the face. I should probably show that in slow-mo. Here it is finishing. Don't force the saw, let the saw do the work. Because we're cutting with the top of the bar, it pulls itself through. Yeah, I noticed that when I did the eye joist. I mean, we already know it's good because we, we checked it before camera. <laughs> Since it's that good, we're gonna show you. Should be a 512, holding it right at the tip, flush here. What do we see there, boys? I think we see a 512. Giddy up. At least that part's like on the money. One thing I should have mentioned, I always cut the ridge cuts first. If for some reason I just messed those up, I still have enough length in the board that I could relay it out. This cut is for the tails. So it's a parallel cut to our plumb cut at the other end, 512. I'm still cutting with the top of the bar, but just the angle that it comes through, the saw wants to climb out of the material. There's two things you could do. One, you can see I've just got my leg kind of just keeping a little bit of pressure so it stays up against the guide. To be fully transparent, I couldn't care less. I'm already cutting on the wrong side of the line so that I have some slop when we go to set the rafters. If you've seen the previous videos, our soffits are already built and they're straight. So I don't really care if the tail is a quarter inch or a half inch short. I know, Timmy's a big time hack. So, keeping some pressure on it with my leg. The other option, of course, is you could cut going the reverse way where you're cutting with the bottom of the bar. That's a lot easier to keep up against the guide, but then it throws sawdust and chips all over the place. And to be honest, that's how I usually do it. But then I get all these people that tell me I'm doing it wrong. Yeah, you can't please everybody. You can please everybody none of the time as I like to say, where you could please half of the people, never, or something such as. Nah, okay, enough of that, enough of that. It, now, you're, I'm gonna leave this in. I thought about editing it out just to shorten up the video, but then I thought, no, this is a good teachable moment. It all looks like it's going just great, but I start to wander off the guide, because I notice I let off the pressure and see how it climbed away, and I'm like, cripes, well now I'm gonna go back and recut. Here's the thing about using the chainsaw. You can't just trim a quarter of an inch. Now watch how difficult this is. It's not like it's hard. It's just that it takes some uh, movement and finesse. I'm gonna fight it. And the part of the reason is if I had the camera on the other side, you would see that the, the bar itself and the chain, they keep trying to find that first cut, but I'm just trying to trim off the amount that I gapped off of that guide. And so you can see it's kind of fighting me a little bit, you know, change position, and we're gonna get it. What I could have done, could have just hopped to the end and cut the other way, but we had cameras set up here, so. Also, those of you that are discerning, you can see that the cut on the bird block is not perfect. It's a little off the line. Ah, that's life, I couldn't, again. That's why we always cut our blocks just a hair short. We're gonna, we're gonna get them in there and they're gonna all look pretty. Hot, hot. Yeah, I see all the oil dripping. Yeah, when I let off, that's why I had my um, thigh against it. Mm -hmm. Keep it to the base plate. And then my job is to kind of keep the saw pushed towards. 
Somehow I lost audio, the little DJI mic in my pocket. Anyway, we don't care about that. This is a Bigfoot. Uh, it's an old Bosch Bigfoot saw, so 10 and a quarter inch blade with a swing table on it. This thing's about 20 years old. Set to 67 and a half degrees. Uh, this cut's never fun, even though the top or underside technically of those two by 12s is pretty flat. There is some kind of working back and forth as you push through the cut. The idea is you just aim straight. Don't get hung up on following the line per se, because sometimes a rafter is a little lower or a little higher, and that can kind of mess up with your eye. Just try to cut straight. That's a steep angle. I'll be honest, this, this cut did not turn out quite as well as I had hoped. Again, it's one of those things that just doesn't matter in practice. But since we're trying to be accurate, then okay. Now here, we're coming back. Now you can see I laid out the bird's mouth and the tail. Originally, we were gonna cut a five inch tail and then we were like, nope, five and a half will work without getting underneath the subfascia. I think that this big 16 and 5 16 skill saw, I wanna say it cuts six and a quarter deep. So you're gonna see that we are gonna to have to finish the cut somewhat in order to cut the tails. I'm going nice and slow and I'm using that Milwaukee power box to the left as power. This is pushing a lot of blades, so just go slow. Oh yeah, the sound of that, that whatever that sound is, I thought it, maybe I was burning up the motor, but no, it's the little seat cut pieces, the little triangles as they're kind of popping and releasing. And again, I'm gonna cut on the wrong side of the line because I wanna shorten these a little bit. It doesn't affect the actual plane of the roof, but because we held our roof sheathing up to catch our bird block, you see how it came out on that side of the line? I'm giving myself just a little bit of place when we're up on the walls. Mm -hmm. Hey, that saw did great. That's a giant saw. All right. Just brought the gimbal. Actually, I have it. Here's the setup. That giant saw set to the plumb cut, <laughs> the other saw practically laying on its side, and then, of course, the chainsaw on the head cutter, all of it powered by that Milwaukee power box, which is turning out to be really handy. Um, maybe I'll follow up on that in the future, but we don't like to run power, yeah, and so that awesome. thing, keeping like, it close. Not to mention, you don't want to pull much cord yeah, for right, these right giant now, saws. Really, you can burn them up. It happens all the time. And let me just show you a couple things. And the Coupe de Grace, well, we got to cut our tails. Uh, there, there's a variety of ways you could lay out your rafter so that you don't have to cut tails, but honestly, this is just easier to take the 15 minutes. Quickly rip the tails, throw them back on the forklift. Now they're ready to just go wherever we need them to go. Come on, lad. New stack. Remember that as framers, we're always trying to be just a little bit more efficient. Like look for small, small things to try and do. 
One of those things is anytime you're doing a particular task, do it as many times as you can. So scribe all the tails, that's you're doing the same thing in the same direction. Then make all of the cuts the same way, when you can. Like we don't get hung up on these things because I need to make a little bit of room there. Now I'm gonna make all the plum cuts, then I'm gonna rip all the tails. I might have been able to sneak that in there. Also, sometimes I get distracted and I forget what I'm doing. But the idea is we're trying to just stay repetitive. Anytime we can be, like game cutting. We handled these raptors two times total. I, I don't really count flopping them because that's pretty easy. We didn't have to lift them. If we would have done, if we would have used a pattern and cut all these tails, good lord. We would have handled each rafter twice minimum and the pattern would have gotten handled once initially to cut and then 50 more times. So like what, 150 movements? 6,000 pounds. So like we saved over 12,000 pounds of movement doing it this way. That's not a small thing. And if you're saving that kind of uh, wear and tear and labor, then you're obviously you're saving time, right? Okay, so how many was that? 50. 50? Yeah. Five, zero. Was it the last one that got you? Oh, just, it's like my hands are soft from gloves and all that. Like, holy cow, like it was, it was quite a bit more than we thought. Okay, 2 by 12, weight per foot, 5.15. Okay. 5.15. Because we really want that one point, that one. Yeah, <laughs> uh, 5.15 times 24 feet, 123.6 pounds per stick times 50 sticks, 6,180 pounds. And guess what? We only packed each of those rafters twice, once on, once off. 